Successfully bringing well-known console games to phones and tablets requires hitting a very specific balance. You want the mobile version to feel like the same game people already like, while acknowledging that using a touchscreen device usually means playing for a short period of time on something that's not designed for games. Call of Duty Warzone Mobile is a pretty ideal demonstration of hitting that balance. It maintains all the most important elements of the PC and console Warzone 2.0 experience while tightening everything about it to be quicker and more concentrated. This is, essentially, a sped up version of the Warzone fans already know and enjoy. Mobile Royale, the main mode of 6 available at launch, looks and feels almost exactly like its PC and console counterpart, but only on a slightly smaller scale. Matches are only 10 minutes long, squads are locked to 3 players, and a lot of the loot you find is generally of a higher quality so you can get effective guns quickly. The map is also smaller, confining you to a specific zone of Verdansk which is the original Warzone map that launched in 2020. The result is a mode that lets you whip through fun and intense battle royale matches at a brisk clip, getting all the same highs with a lot less downtime. If you're familiar with Call of Duty's take on the mode that PUBG spawned and Fortnite picked up and ran with, then you already know everything you need to about how Warzone Mobile works, apart from some slight, smart variations meant to speed things along. Still, the Warzone formula continues to be a fun one thanks to its specific elements. You'll drop into matches with 36, 60, or up to 120 players and search for weapons with which to fight other people you run into, either alone or in squads of varying sizes. The map includes contracts you can complete to earn money, which you can then spend on armor and killstreaks. In the main modes, dying sends you to the Gulag, where you fight another defeated player for a chance to respawn. That's still an excellent mechanic that adds a lot of intense and exciting battles to matches. Everything functions just as you know it from the usual Warzone, making it possible for veterans to pop into a mobile match and have fun immediately. What does take some getting used to is the controls. While the touch controls work well enough, they always feel cumbersome, specifically in fast-paced competitive play. You can instantly tell when you're facing someone using a console controller via Bluetooth or a Backbone-style attachment because they jump and slide in ways that are difficult to manage with touch controls. In short, a controller is recommended if you care about your kill-death ratio. At the same time, it's totally understandable if you tough out the touch controls because Warzone Mobile is something to take out of your pocket to play for a few minutes at a time, and they're all smart adjustments that boil the genre down to its best parts. For instance, there's no real inventory management to speak of. If you're carrying a gun or a killstreak, picking up another one just swaps them. Loot is kept simple, so your choices become about finding the sorts of weapons you prefer. It all comes together to put Warzone Mobile's focus on getting you to the action-packed moments quickly, making just about every match harrowing and exciting, with a lot less time spent on logistics or running around a huge map. In addition to a solo and squad version of Mobile Royale, there's also a more traditional four-player squad mode with 20-minute matches if you want something a bit meatier but still quick. There's also Rebirth Resurgence, a Warzone mode that takes place on its Rebirth Island map and does away with the Gulag, instead respawning players periodically as long as their teammates stay alive, making it a fun and chaotic change of pace. The speedier matches add a pressure cooker aspect, since any opponents you fail to kill can quickly be reinforced, and staying alive yourself is crucial to keeping your team going. The mode takes the action of Mobile Royale and can stretch it out into heart-pounding, hide-and-seek battles, and its specific idiosyncrasies can change your priorities slightly as you hunt down opponents. You can also play some back-to-basic 6-on-6 Call of Duty multiplayer with the Mosh Pit and Shoot the Ship modes. Mosh Pit cycles through several objective game types on some well-known maps, while Shoot the Ship does the same thing, but on only two Modern Warfare maps, Shoot House and Shipment. While half the available modes right now are just variations on the Mobile Royale theme with differently sized squads, the variety is a nice way to shake things up and keep Warzone Mobile feeling compelling, even if you're not in the mood for Battle Royale. That makes this feel more like a scaled-down take on traditional Call of Duty than it does a compromised mobile version. 
Even so, you're best off playing both this and the console or PC version because Warzone Mobile includes cross-progression. It's a phenomenal addition that instantly makes this more enjoyable if you're already a Warzone fan. Not everything transfers, but a lot of the most meaningful stuff is available in both games. Your battle pass progress, your purchased character skins, and most crucially, your unlocked weapons and saved loadouts. If you've got guns you love and loadouts you're practiced with, signing into your Activision account means they're already waiting for you in Warzone Mobile, and rewards you earn or changes you make here transfer back too. Wherever it can, Warzone Mobile makes it as easy as possible to play and enjoy it. Another upside of cross-progression is that Warzone Mobile's monetization scheme is nearly identical to its big siblings, and a lot of the skins and blueprints you can buy in one game work in the other and carry all the same prices. The only trouble is that the whole system is a bit confusing. This little chain link icon means these all work in all games, but some might be specific to one version of Warzone or the other. Warzone Mobile warns you that you can still buy items in the Warzone Mobile store even if they don't work in Warzone Mobile. Currently, there don't seem to be any items that you can buy that don't cross between the games, but the suggestion means you'll need to be careful about pulling the trigger on purchases to make sure you're getting exactly what you want for the game you intend to play. The paper-thin barrier of entry, especially for established COD players, is the best thing about Warzone Mobile. It feels like a new slate of options for playing Warzone, accommodating you when you're not at home or when you've got friends who favor phones over consoles without losing much of what makes it such a popular game. On the other side of that coin, you don't need to be a Warzone diehard with countless hours already banked to enjoy Warzone Mobile. The phone version also brings over all the metagame logistical elements, like custom loadouts and the gunsmith, which is a menu that lets you customize your weapons. You can do just about everything in Warzone Mobile that you can in Warzone, making the smaller game just as viable as your mainstay battle royale. It's not doing anything new, but the if it ain't broke mentality gets along just fine. One final caveat is that, as is to be expected for a game made for a variety of mobile devices, your visual quality is going to depend heavily on your device. On my two-year-old Google Pixel 6a, textures don't always stream in correctly and will often pop in as I'm playing, and everything can sometimes just be a bit muddy. I also experienced some issues with frame rate and lag times, although so early after launch, it's possible those problems can be chalked up to early growing pains and a large influx of players. As far as microtransactions in this free-to-play game go, they're largely the same as the standard Warzone, which means they're not unreasonably expensive relative to other games like this, and it's not considered pay to win. It's tough to think of a mobile game that comes as close to giving the full-scale multiplayer experience as Call of Duty Warzone Mobile does. There's nothing here that reinvents Warzone, but that isn't the point. Though the touch controls put you at a clear disadvantage to anybody using a Bluetooth controller, and your phone may struggle to keep the frame rate and the textures smooth if it isn't the latest and greatest, Warzone Mobile excellently uses maps and gameplay elements to provide a fast and fun Battle Royale experience. If you're already into Warzone, cross-progression makes it feel like an extension of the game you already like, with more opportunities to play it more often. It's fair to say that the best thing about Warzone Mobile is that it makes it easier to play more Warzone. For more Call of Duty, check out our reviews of Modern Warfare 3's single player and multiplayer and Warzone 2.0. And for everything else, stick with IGN.